BanjoBenClark.com in the cabin with my good friend Jim Britton. Good to have you, Jim. Thanks, Ben. Good to be here. Yeah, man. Good so, to have you in. I've been watching your videos for a long time. You're one of my favorite pickers. That's why I called you up. I said, would you please come to the cabin <laughs> and give us some banjo knowledge? And you're so nice oh, to, to oblige that. Yeah, so thanks, welcome, man. man. It's an honor to be here. Well, well today here. we're going to talk about some things that you do, sure. um, both online and with the banjo. Yeah. I want folks to, to meet you and yeah. to... Learn more about your approach to playing yeah. this thing. How long have you been playing this thing? Well, I started when I was uh, 14 years old. Well, so, we won't say how many years that yeah. is unless you want to. That was 1986, <laughs> okay. so somebody's going to have to do math right there. <laughs> if you're watching somewhere else besides BanjoBenClark.com, here in a little bit I'll ask you to come on board over there. Join as a Gold Pit member. You can see hundreds of videos over there. I have lots of special guests just like Jim where we learn all kinds of things banjo. And so let's get started. All right, folks, we're going to learn some good licks today. I, I call this section Jim's Favorite Licks. <laughs> Actually, uh, this is the first time we've ever had this section, Jim's Favorite Licks, but it's going to be good, I know. <laughs> so, Jim, you're, you're a pro banjo player. You moved to town back in the 90s, uh, to town meaning Nashville. Mm -hmm. And you played with Lyric Sparks for years. Mm -hmm. Then you went with Jim and Jesse for mm -hmm. years. You played with all kinds of different folks. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and, of course, you're... Your uh, resume speaks for itself, and I know that folks out there want to kind of hear uh, from you what some of your favorite licks are. We were picking here in the cabin earlier, and I picked several out that I would like to learn myself. Mm -hmm. Sure. So sure. how about we do that? Yeah, that'd be yeah. great. So one of them that you, I think you said it's an Alan Shelton lick, mm -hmm. and uh, what's, what's your musical connection to Alan Shelton? Okay, so uh, 1988, the first... Um, first bluegrass, live bluegrass music show that I ever went to see was at John Battle High School in um, Bristol, Virginia. And I went and saw Bill Monroe and the Bluegrass Boys and Jim and Jesse and the Virginia mm -hmm. Boys. And when I, I, had, I had never been to a bluegrass show, but when Jim and Jesse came out and there was this long, tall, lanky fella playing the banjo, grinning from ear to ear. And he played, and it was kind of not what I was used to hearing, and it was kind of something different. And I'd already become a Jim and Jesse fan, uh -huh. and I just really collected a lot of their material uh, before that, and then uh, and then mm. after that. And that was Alan Shelton playing yeah. the banjo, and and um, a lot of that stuff is still way over my head. But uh, and you was, got to know him, I assume, a little bit. Yeah. You know, I bought both uh, both his instrumental records, and he signed them, and he actually. At, at that, I think it was at that one or the next year in Bristol, he actually handed me his at the time a brand new reissue Granada. I think he wow. had, I think he had number two or number one yeah. or number two, and he handed it to me, and I couldn't even do a roll. And, and Alan was 
trying to get me to do things. And we were sitting in folding <laughs> chairs, feeling. and he handed, yeah, he handed me his Granada and said, you know, do you play? And I said, well, a little, and he just, he just handed it oh, to wow. me, and I, I had no idea what to do with it. But yeah, wow. so he was a huge influence. Well, this is an up the neck mm -hmm. D lick going mm -hmm. to G that's right. got a lot of attitude to it, and uh, why don't you play it for the folks down here? Okay. So would you say that that's more of a backup lick, or would you ever use that in a, in a lead situation? Uh, I would mostly back up, but in a medium tempo vocal mm -hmm. uh, type song, I would do that possibly at the end of a break. Gotcha. And okay. do something like that. Yeah. So let me play guitar behind it so we can hear it. I'll, I'll just uh, give a four beat count in. Okay. okay. So it's, it is different. The reason why I asked you to teach that is because, of course, there's some similar sounding things in there that will augment a note. Mm -hmm. is, we're used to doing that whenever right. we go up the neck for foggy mountain breakdown or whatever, right. um, which I always thought was interesting. You know, we play augmented notes all the time on bluegrass banjo. Right. Um, but you're doing some inside rolls and stuff. So if you could kind of explain what you're doing there, yeah. you're going up to that D position. Yeah. So um, I, I read a little bit, and Alan described it as a as a roll that he had gotten from. Chet Atkins. Oh, really? And it was a forward. So it's inside. It's and inside then outside. and outside. Cool. So it goes. So then you're raising that second. Uh, or the, I'm sorry. The uh, yes, the yeah, second, string second string from the tenth fret up to the eleventh. Right. Which we're, which we're used to doing, but you just have to do a different fingering because uh, you're doing, still playing the whole chord. Right, so. Yeah, and then you're sliding back down into a, that G position, yeah. and, and there you did like a double thumb type. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. That's really nice. I'm gonna have to put that one in my in my bag of licks there. And because it's closed, it's not just relegated to D going to G. You could do it if you're in F. You could go C to F. That's too. right. Yeah, you could just do bring that. it down two frets. That's right. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. And I guess anywhere else you wanted to do it too. Right. Right. That's really cool. Yeah. So um, let's go down the neck. Okay. And. You know, I was talking with you earlier that um, we tend to settle into patterns, particu sure. particularly over chord progressions that we see all the time. So right. you take a you take a song like Foggy Mountain Breakdown or something, and and where it goes to that five chord for two measures, and then right. Right back to the one, mm -hmm. we get in these habits where we play the same licks right. over and over and over again. Right. And you just you know you were playing earlier, and I, I kind of pointed it out that. You could take the same lick and just create little variations right. to make it like different licks. And let's right. let's talk about that one. Okay. Um. 